One afternoon, Emily was being prepared to take a goods train up to Marrow. As she waited, she noticed Murdoch looking rather glum. Are you alright there, Murdoch? She asked curiously. Oh, I'm fine, just reminiscing. What about? wondered Emily. About a close friend that I used to work with back on British Railways. Would you like to hear it? Yes, please, Emily replied. And so this is the story Murdoch told her. Before I came to Sodor, I worked on British Railways, pulling goods trains up and down the network. I loved it there. The challenging gradients and friendly faces made it no better place to be. But one day, the Shedmaster came up to me. Murdoch, you have done very well, and as a reward for your hard work, you will be given a new coat of black paint with red stripes. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir, I replied happily, and hurried away to the works. When I arrived, the painters had something rather peculiar in the paint pots. There was orange, green, yellow, and red. Um, excuse me, but this isn't right, I said. I'm supposed to be painted black with red stripes, not orange and yellow stripes like squashed fruit. Sorry, Murdoch, we were supposed to have a delivery of paint this afternoon, but the engine carrying load had a collision with a standard four, and the paint was damaged, so we won't have any more paint until next week. So it looks like we're going to have to use these colours instead. Oh well, I sighed. It's not your fault. Things happen. Although I have a feeling the others will never let this one down. And I was right. When I came to the sheds later, they laughed at me and said I looked like an oversized tropical fruit on wheels. This angered me deeply and I would always leave the sheds to rest outside. One day I was waiting at the station to let the passenger train go through. When the train arrived, the engine who was pulling it had large driving wheels, strange coupling rod arrangements, and nameplates that read Duke of Gloucester on both sides of his smoke deflectors. I was impressed. He looked very similar to the Britannia's, but longer and had a smaller boiler. Hello there, he said. My name is Duke of Gloucester, and you are? M -m -m my name's M -M Murdoch, I stuttered shyly. Are you a new engine? Why, yes. I was built two days ago. I was to replace a Princess Royal class, as it was in a terrible accident, he replied. Then he looked at my livery. You're going to tease me about it, aren't you? I sighed knowingly. Not at all, my dear chap. I think it makes you unique and adds a bit of diversity to the railway instead of all engines painted in just two colours. After hearing that, I felt a lot happier. Just then, a grumbling jubilee, who was nicknamed Westy, backed down to a line of trucks. It's not fair, he complained. I don't get a new crest, my crew don't have the decency to care for me, and now I have to take goods trains? I'm an express engine, not a mixed traffic engine. He looked at me and scoffed. At least I'm not painted in a ridiculous livery. It's a shame we don't have a bowl. We could have put you in it. After all, that's where fruit belong. How dare you, Duke of Gloucester snapped. Call yourself a steam engine, you're a disgrace to this railway. Haven't you got a train to take instead of teasing engines that are more significant than you? Westy snorted and puffed away with his trucks. Thank you, I replied. Um, mind if I call you the Duke instead? I think Duke of Gloucester is a bit of a mouthful, and the Duke sounds more fitting, if you know what I mean. Of course you can, smiled the Duke. It's nice to see that someone thought about the length of my name, and we chuckled together. We soon became very good friends, and for many years we worked alongside one another. And when the Duke suffered from being a poor steamer, I'd gladly take over his express trains. Then the modernization plan was put into action, and steam engines all over the network were withdrawn from service and replaced with new up-to-date diesels. The engines allocated to this shed were left on a siding, silent and still. The Duke and I were most upset, 
We were told that we were going to be withdrawn next year. I can't believe this is happening, I said sadly. All my classmates thrown on the scrap line after ten years of service, and I'm the only one left. Hardly, replied the Duke. I overheard from my crew that the last steam locomotive built was in fact a member of your class, chap. So it's not the end of the world. I suppose, I sighed glumly. I just wish I could live on and prove that even we standard locomotives have a future too. But before I realised it, my chance came sooner than expected. The Shedmaster came up with a gentleman in a top hat. This is Sir Topham Hat, he said proudly. He owns the North Western Railway, and he doesn't have any plans to abolish steam. Indeed, he replied. Now my railway is struggling at the moment, and I am in need of an engine to help out with the heavy workload. Can you handle it? Yes, sir, of course, sir. That's a good engine, smiled Sir Topham Hat. There's life in the old dog yet, smiled the driver. I smiled too. My wish to have a future had come true. Soon it was time for me to leave for my long journey to the North Western Railway. I was sad to leave the Duke behind. Not to worry, chap, he said. We'll meet again some day. You promise, I replied. I promise. Then with a hiss of steam, I puffed away and the Duke watched until I was out of sight. And that was the last time I ever saw the Duke, finished Murdoch. And now I fear he may have been scrapped. I wish I didn't leave him on his own with those diesels. Murdoch puffed away, leaving a worried Emily behind. She felt very sorry for him and wanted to help him out. Come on, Emily, time to go, said the driver. Oh, right, of course. And puffed out of the shed. When she backed down onto a train, she couldn't think of anything to help Murdoch out. The fat controller who was standing on the platform noticed Emily and wondered what's wrong. Push the batter, Emily. It's Murdoch, sir. Emily began. He told me about an old friend that he worked with on the British Railways, and he's worried that he's scrapped. What was the engine's name? The fat controller asked. Duke of Gloucestershire. The fat controller thought for a moment. The day rings a bell, but I can't put my finger on it, he replied. What does he look like? He's a big green engine with nameplates, described Emily. Then the fat controller smiled. Yes, of course, she cried. Now I remember him. Now I'm not promising anything, but I'll see what I can do. And hurried to his office. Emily felt proud as the guard blew his whistle. That night, Murdoch was just being simmered down by his crew when Emily reversed down with the fat controller on board. He stepped down. So I've been told that you are worried about an old friend. Yes, sir, said Murdoch. Well, Murdoch, you'll be in for a surprise. Murdoch's jaw dropped as backing down next to him was a green engine with familiar nameplates on his smoke deflectors. Hello, old friend. It's been a while, hasn't it? Indeed, replied Murdoch happily. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You're very welcome, Murdoch, smiled the fat controller. I'll leave you to it. He turned and walked away, leaving the free engines to talk all night long. But I mustn't tell you any more, or I shall spoil the next story. <laughs> Murdoch was feeling like his old self again. Duke of Gloucestershire was an old friend of his who worked alongside him back on British Railways. The fat controller had made arrangements for the Duke to pay a visit, after Emily had told him what Murdoch had told her. Now the two giants of steam were talking just like the old days. But one morning as the two engines were being cleaned and fired up, Murdoch asked a quick question. 
So how did you survive? he asked. Well, began the Duke. When I was withdrawn from service, I rusted away to Scrapyard at Barry, until some rail enthusiasts purchased and restored me. Modifications had been made to my chimney and firebed internal dampers, as they were too small and couldn't make me breathe properly. Nowadays, I work on the main line, pulling express trains. Murdoch was impressed and was just about to reply when at that moment the fat controller arrived. Good morning! Good morning, morning sir. sir, they said together. <laughs> now, Murdoch, you are to take slow goods up to Wellsworth at 8 o'clock, and Duke of Gloucestershire, you will be taking the express, as Gordon is currently stuck by broken points. Yes, sir, replied Murdoch. We won't let you down, sir, added the Duke. And with that, the fat controller walked away, satisfied with the big engine's words. Who's Gordon? the Duke asked. He's a Pacific that pulls the express, Murdoch explained. He's rather vain and pompous and is one to watch out for. Is he now? Well, I'll make sure I'll put him in his place, smiled the Duke confidently, and <laughs> rolled away to collect the express with a chuckle. Emily was at the station as the Duke backed down onto the train. Good morning, she said cheerily. Good morning, Emily. Lovely day, isn't it? It certainly is. Um, but where's Gordon? He's currently stuck by faulty points, I believe, so I'll be taking over his express. I see. Oh, that's my guard's whistle. I best be off. Goodbye, Emily. Bye. The Duke thundered down the line, whistling to engines as he went by. This is the life, he said happily. Further up the line, Gordon was waiting with a goods train, grumbling dreadfully. Come on, what's taking so long? His driver was becoming tired of the engines complaining. Stop complaining, grumbling won't get us out of here any faster. Suddenly the rails beside him began to shake as the sound of four cylinders working hard whistled and roared past him with a full train. Who on earth was that? cried Gordon, startled by the engine's speed. At long last, Gordon was free from the point and backed into the shed, where he found Murdoch talking to the mysterious newcomer. Oh, hello, you must be Gordon. My name is Duke of Gloucestershire. I'm sorry if I startled you earlier on. Startled? You scared the living daylight out of me, replied Gordon bluntly. Also, by curiosity, why were you pulling my express? Because I told him to, said a familiar voice. The engines looked down to see the fat controller standing in front of them. Shubwad needed to take the train, Gordon, and since Henry and James are busy with their own work, I decided to let the Duke take it. On the topic of work, that reminds me, you need to collect slow goods from Tidney, so off you go, please. Gordon rolled his eyes and rumbled away. The fat controller then turned to the Duke. Well, John, I'm pulling the express, Duke of Gloucestershire. You certainly did a fine job. Thank you, sir. I try my best. As your reward, I'd like to offer you a special trade-up to the other railway. The Duke smiled happily. Yes, sir, I would love that. Thank you, sir, I won't let you down. I know you would, chuckled the fat controller. He tipped his hat and walked away. Meanwhile, James had been told to shunt the Pullman coaches in preparation for the Duke. He didn't mind doing this type of work, anything's better than pushing trucks, but for the Pullman coaches, he had a high respect. He found the coaches all clean and polished as they always were. They're all yours, James, called the workman. Come on then, my lovelies. So James was coupled up and pulled away. However, the workman had forgotten that the first and brake coaches were due to be sent to the works of faulty couplings and brakes. Emily knew this and steamed into the yards to find them missing. Where are the Pullman coaches? Have they gone to the works? 
No, I told James to take them to the station for Duke of Gloucestershire. Emily gasped. Oh no, I must stop him. And she hurried away. At the station, James shunted the coaches into the platform. They look marvellous, said James. It's a shame that a red engine like me isn't pulling them. Oh, James, replied Murdoch. The world doesn't revolve around you. Oh, I suppose not this morning. I'll see you later, Murdoch. Looking forward to the journey, Duke. You bet I am, chap, smiled the Duke as he was coupled up to the train and brake pipes connected. I can't wait to start. Get in quickly, please. You'll be at the other railway in no time. The passengers boarded and the guard blew his whistle. With a roar, the Duke slowly eased out of the station, just as Emily arrived on the other platform. Stop! Stop! Why? What for? answered Murdoch. Those coaches haven't been checked. What do you mean? The coaches he's pulling were supposed to have a replacement coupling and brakes mended today, but some stupid bugger told James to take them here. Oh no, you mean they aren't safe, cried Murdoch. Duke, wait! But it was too late. The Duke had gone. Meanwhile, the Duke puffed along the line, unaware of what was to happen next. When he reached the top of Gordon's Hill, the weight of the train began to strain on the coupling, and, of course, with a crack, it broke. All of a sudden, the coaches started moving on their own, slowly, but faster and faster down the slope. The Duke was completely unaware. That's funny, my train suddenly feels a lot lighter, he wondered. His driver noticed it too, and looked back. Blummy neck, we need to speed up, the coaches are after us! And putting full throttle on the regulator, the Duke started to go faster, but the coaches were matching their speed. We need to apply the brakes, shouted the fireman, and injure all those passengers on board, no chance, replied the driver. Let the coaches come to me, shouted the Duke urgently. Put the brakes on on the instant they hit my buffers. The crew didn't like the plan, but reluctantly agreed. The coaches came closer and closer as they came to the slope. Now, cried the Duke, and his driver slammed on the brakes. They screeched all the way to Marin Station and rolled to an unexpected stop. Luckily, the passengers weren't hurt, but were very confused on what had happened. Well done, old boy, congratulated the driver. You're a hero. Thank you, stuttered the Duke. So what happened, asked the driver. Surely that wasn't our fault. The brakes weren't working, replied the guard, and he looked at the front coach. And it seems the coupling wasn't fastened on right. The crew looked at what was supposed to be a coupling. I'll call for another engine with a replacement coupling. Whoever did this is going to be in a whole lot of trouble. The Duke was uncoupled from the train and Emily arrived with a replacement coupling. When it was fitted, she backed onto the train. Bob that workman. She grumbled. I hope you are okay. The Duke said nothing. He was too shaken up. When the Duke came back to the sheds, the other engines felt sorry for him. Are you alright? asked Murdoch. I am fine, Trav. Just a bit startled is all, the Duke replied. Gordon tried to lighten the mood. Now you know how I felt when you passed me. Nobody laughed, but fortunately for the awkward silence, the fat controller arrived. There's no need to worry. This could happen to any engine. I'm very pleased on how you've managed the situation. Yes, sir, replied the Duke. The next day, it was time for the Duke of Gloucestershire to leave for home. Come back and see us soon, the engines whistled. I'm sad to see you go, said Murdoch. Don't worry, chap, the Duke replied. I might be able to see you again. Every cloud has a silver lining. 
Murdoch laughed. He was sure they would meet again. Puffing proudly out of the station, there was a roaring chorus of whistles and cheers for the Duke of Gloucestershire.